السلام علیکم ایوری ون کیا حال ہے آپ لوگوں کے وعلیکم السلام واٹس ایپ تھینک یو اسد اپریشیٹ اٹ میں ٹھیک الحمد للہ اوکے سو دوز آف یو ہو واچنگ ایف یو گائز کو جسٹ پلیز لائک دا اسٹریم دیٹ وڈ مین لاٹ and uh, let's start so today's objective is coordinate geometry uh, hello sir which topics are you still planning to cover before october november so i'm planning on doing coordinate geometry equation of circles functions i did a stream on differentiation or maybe integration as well trigonometry yeah trigonometry so trigonometry inshallah functions and equation of circles okay All right, so let's start, shall we? How many of you are giving exams in October, November? This stream is, by the way, mainly for students for October, November. I mean, students who have their exam in October, November. Yes, yes, um, this stream will be uploaded. You will find the stream later as well on the channel. Okay, so don't worry about that. O-level, October, November. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, now, so today's objective is that we will go over the concepts as well as past paper questions, okay? But most of the concepts that you have in coordinate geometry, most of the concepts, not all of the concepts, but most of the concepts that you have in coordinate geometry are basically from O-level math, okay? Now, if you've done it, if you've done ad maths, then I think pretty much all the concepts other than equation of circles, which we're not gonna cover today, are the same, but the difficulty level of the questions is much higher, okay? So let's, uh, let's go over the concepts one by one and we'll do possible questions on the side as well, okay? Now, mostly there are just formulas that you have to remember, okay? So if you, if you look at these concepts up until here, so all these concepts are basically the same as O levels, slash IGCSC math. Okay. It's all based on formulas. Okay. So let's, let's write down the formulas. Let's go over the formulas quickly. And then we will do pass paper questions. So my, my objective is to move to pass paper questions as quickly as possible because it is through pass paper questions that we will do most of our learning. Okay. All right. Uh, So the first concept is distance between two points. Again, there's a simple formula for it, which you have to remember. And what is that formula? That formula is x2 minus x1, the whole thing square, plus y2 minus y1, the whole thing square. So if let's say you have a line, okay, or any two points for that matter, x1, y1, and b, x2, y2. And you're asked to find out the distance. So the distance can be calculated, like I said, by using a very simple formula, which is x2 minus x1, the whole thing square, plus y2 minus y1, the whole thing square. Okay. So there you go. That's that. Okay. Now, then the other concept, which is midpoint. Let's have a look at that. Anyone who remembers the formula for midpoint? If you have a point with coordinates x1, y1, and you have another point with coordinates x2, y2, midpoint is basically the point that is equidistant from a and b in this case. So the formula for that is very simple. 
you add the x coordinates, divide by 2, you add the y coordinates, divide by 2. x1 plus x2 upon 2, comma, y1 plus y2 upon 2. There you go, that's that. Then gradient, okay, gradient. Wa alaikum as -salam. Now related to uh, gradient, there are a lot of concepts related to gradient, which we are going to cover one by one. So let's start with the very first concept, which is what exactly gradient is. Now gradient is basically the ratio of rise to run. So if you have a point, let's say A, with coordinates x1, y1, and if you have another point, B, with coordinates x2, y2. So how will I find out the gradient of line AB? The gradient of line AB will simply be the difference in y over the difference in x. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and this will give you your gradient. So like I said, it is basically the ratio of the rise over run, or rises to run, okay? Now, a couple of things related to the gradient, as I mentioned, you should be able to look at the line and be able to instantly decide what the gradient of the line is going to be in the sense whether it's going to be positive, negative, zero, or infinity. Again, if you've seen any of my O-level math or ADMATH videos related to coordinate geometry, you know I always like to cover this concept, which is what will be the gradient of these lines, okay? Now let me first draw all the lines before I ask you guys to answer. Okay, so we have four kinds of straight lines over here. Can you tell me, obviously you, since you don't have any values, you can't tell me the value of the gradient and I'm not expecting you to tell me the value of the gradient anyway. But just by looking at the line, can you tell me which line will have a positive gradient, which one will have zero, which one will have infinity, which will have negative and yeah. We have four cases and four different types of gradients. Okay, so for line one, this line will have a positive gradient. That is correct. This line, on the other hand, will have a negative gradient. Very good. And this line will have gradient zero. And no, for line number four, the gradient will actually be infinity. Okay. Yep, positive, negative, zero, and infinity. Okay. So just remember that if you have a line that's upward sloping, and how do we know that this line is upward sloping? What we do is we have a standard rule. We move towards the positive x-axis, and then you see what's, what is the line doing. If the line is rising, which it is, so because this line is rising as we move towards the positive x-axis, therefore this will have a positive gradient. And over here, if you move towards the positive x-axis, what is this line doing? This line is falling. So because this line is falling, the gradient of this line will be zero, or uh, will be negative, sorry. And this line right here, because in this line there is no change in y. If you think about it, this is a horizontal line. There is no change in y, so what is the gradient going to be? The gradient is going to be zero. And in this case, since there is no change in x, the gradient is going to be infinity. If you use the gradient formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, you will have zero upon x2 minus x1 which is equal to zero. And if you use that formula over here, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, here you will have zero in the denominator, and which is why it becomes infinity, okay? So that's the reason behind the gradient being zero and infinity, respectively. Okay, now. Yes, it is undefined, or you can call it infinity as well. Anything divided by zero is infinity, okay? And infinity is not a definite value. That is why we call it undefined, okay? And the difference between definite and indefinite is, um, definite is limited, indefinite is not limited, okay? All right, now, moving on to the next concept. Now, related to, in fact, wait, before we do that, related to gradient, there are actually 
two, three more concepts. So point number one related to gradient is this, that gradient of collinear points. What does that mean? Collinear points is the same. And what does collinear points mean? Collinear points basically mean points lying on the same straight line. So for example, if let's say <coughs> you have a line with multiple points P, Q, and R. And if these points are lying on the same straight line, that means P, Q, and R are collinear points, okay? So if you find out the gradient using the points P, Q, that will be the same as the gradient using the points Q, R, and that will be the same as using the points P and R, okay? Now, what kind of questions we will come across? That is something we'll look into later, okay? Uh, uh, yes, there will be streams on AdMats, inshallah. I did one a couple of days back and I'll do one again. Yes, these notes will be uploaded. Okay, these notes will be uploaded. Don't worry about that. Okay, now, this was concept number one related to gradient. There is another concept related to gradient, which is parallel lines. Now, parallel lines have the same gradient. Okay, remember. Parallel lines have the same gradient. And then there is another concept related to perpendicular lines. Anyone who can tell me what that is? What happens when two lines are perpendicular? gradient of a perpendicular line can be found by taking the negative reciprocal. Okay, so if you're given the gradient of one line and you wanna find out the gradient of the other, all you have to do is take the negative reciprocal of it, okay? Now, what I like to do is, I like to sort of uh, do, a, do a few examples where let's say you have a straight line, okay? So here you have the gradient of a straight line, okay? And here you have to tell me what will be the gradient of the line parallel to it and in the column next to it, we will write down the gradient of the line that is perpendicular to it. Okay, so if let's say you have a line that has gradient two. So the line that is parallel to it will also have gradient two and the line which is perpendicular to it, the gradient of that will be minus one upon three. Okay, oh sorry, minus one upon two. I don't know why it turned into three, minus one upon two. If let's say you have a line which has gradient minus one. So the gradient of the line that's parallel to it will also be minus one, but the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to it will be the negative reciprocal of minus one, which is going to be one. If let's say you have a line which has gradient minus two upon three, then the gradient of the line which is parallel to it will also be minus two upon three, but the gradient of the line that is perpendicular to it will be three upon two, okay? Uh, this stream will be, you can say, around um, an hour, hour and a half max. Not an hour, definitely hour and a half, because password per questions, you will notice, are actually quite lengthy. Okay. All right. Now, so let's quickly check mark all the concepts that we have done. Distance between two points, midpoint, gradient, parallel, and collinear points, perpendicular lines. Okay. Now let's talk about equation of straight line and perpendicular bisector, then we'll do some pass paper questions, okay? Now, how do you find out the equation of a straight line? What do you need? You need a point and the gradient, okay? Now, by the way, we have a new method in A-levels that we use, okay? 
new method compared to O levels in IGCSE math, but same as what we used to do in ADD maths, okay? Which is called the point slope method. So equation of a straight line, previously, this is what we used, y is equals to mx plus c, okay? Just a minute. Okay, yeah. This is what we used in O levels and IGCSC. Okay, now we have a different method, which is y minus y1 is equals to m x minus x1. This is what we're going to use now. Okay. A level math and add maths, okay? And this, by the way, is called the point slope method. The point slope, uh, the point slope method, or you can call it the point slope formula. Okay, where basically m is what? And the reason why we call it the point slope formula is very simple, because m is the gradient, and x1, y1 is basically any point on the line. m is the gradient, x1, y1 is basically any point on the line. And gradient, by the way, is the same as slope, okay? Now, <clears throat> so how do we use this? Let's just do an example so that you guys know exactly how it works. Let's say that you have the following. And by the way, wait a minute. Before we do an example, let's go back to this. And uh, again, there's something that I like to add over here that is, by looking at a straight line, you should be able to identify what will its equation look like, okay? So you should be able to do that and that will help you in making sure that your answer is correct, okay? And it will give you a small edge when you're solving past repair questions. Okay. So if you have something like this, we just saw that the gradient of this line is going to be positive, but what will the equation look like? It's going to be y equals to mx plus c, okay? And in this case, the gradient will be negative. What will the equation look like? The equation will also be y equals to mx plus c. So any upward or downward sloping line will have equation that looks like this. Then if you have a horizontal line with gradient zero, what will its equation be? its equation will be y is equals to c. So for example, if let's say you have a horizontal line cutting the y-axis at two, its equation will be y is equals to two. And if let's say you have a vertical line which is cutting the x-axis at b, now we know that the gradient of this line is going to be infinity, but what about the equation? It's going to be x equals to p. So just by looking at the line, you should be able to determine what the equation will look like. Not the exact equation, obviously that's not possible, but you should be able to determine what the end equation will look like, okay? Now, then we have, let's do an example first so that we understand. Uh, it's not mandatory that you use the new formula, but it's recommended that you do, okay? So let's do an example so that we can understand the use of the new formula. So let's say you're asked to find out the equation of a straight line with gradient two, and it's passing through the point P with coordinates four comma nine, okay? So you have to find the equation. I will suggest that you gradually move towards using the new formula because it makes life easy. So here we have x1, y1, okay? Let's write down the formula. Y minus y1 is equals to m x minus x1. So y minus the y coordinate, which means y minus nine, and then m into x minus x coordinate, which means x minus four. So here we have y is equals to two x minus eight plus nine, which means y is equals to two x plus one, is your final answer. That's it. 
So it's actually much easier than y equals to mx plus c. OK, so I will give you guys an example question to solve quickly. And the gradient of the line is minus 3. And the point through which it's passing has coordinates 1, comma minus 4. So quickly find me the equation of this. And while you're at it, do another part, which is gradient is equals to minus 2 upon 3. And it's passing through the point minus 4, comma 3. Go. Find me the equation of these two lines. And then we'll move on to perpendicular bisector. And then after perpendicular bisector, we'll do some pass paper questions. If you have one point, then no, you can't, because you can't find the gradient then. Okay. Now, you either need two points, or you need a point and the gradient, or you need the gradient and the y-intercept, which is the same as gradient in one point, if you think about it. No, no, we're not doing equation of circle yet. We are doing the first part of coordinate geometry. Okay. All right, so y equals to minus 4x minus 1, really? That doesn't make sense. How can it be minus 4x when the gradient is minus 3? You might want to look into that. Y minus minus 4 is equals to minus 3 into x minus 1. So y plus 4 equals to minus 3x plus 3, which means y is equals to minus 3x and 3 minus 4, which is minus 1. Okay. Then for part C, y minus 3 is equals to minus 2 upon 3 into x minus minus 4, which means y minus 3 is equals to, okay, so let's skip a step here minus minus will become plus now you can cross multiply so 3y minus 9 is equals to minus 2x minus 8 which means 3y is equals to minus 2x and then what do we have minus 8 plus 9 which is plus 1 there you go 3y is equals to minus 2x plus 1 okay be careful of the signs don't make a sign error you lose marks. OK, now next is equation of perpendicular bisector. Now, equation of perpendicular bisector is perhaps the most frequently tested concept. OK. In past papers, OK. It is very frequently tested. And this is also very important for equation of circles, OK? So if you're doing equation of circles, or if you want to be good at equation of circles, make sure that you revise this concept very well. Uh, shoelace method, shoelace method, uh, let's see. Let's see if I can include shoelace method as well, OK? So yeah, coming back. So how do we find out the equation of a perpendicular bisector? Let's look into that. So let's say. So you have a point A here, and you have point B over here, OK? And you're asked to find out the equation of perpendicular bisector. So it's a three, four step process, OK, through which we find out the equation of perpendicular bisector, OK? So let's do it step by step. <coughs> so first of all, the first thing that we do is, and w what are you supposed to do, by the way? Here, the question is that you find the equation of 
the perpendicular bisector of line AB. Okay. Now, so step number one. Step number one is that you find the gradient of line AB. Okay, so that's your first step. Step number two is that you take the negative reciprocal of the gradient of line AB. Now, why is that? That is because what we are finding out is just a minute. The reason why we do that is because we're finding out the gradient of the line that is perpendicular to line AB. Okay, so just a minute. Let me make some room here. Yeah, so step two is that you find, uh, take the negative reciprocal of the gradient of line AB. Now, if you try and break down the word perpendicular bisector, perpendicular means what? Perpendicular basically means making a 90 degree angle. Okay, that's what perpendicular means. Bisecting means what? Bisecting means cutting into half. That is what the word bisect means. Okay, which is why the perpendicular bisector always passes through the midpoint. Okay, and that brings us to the third step, which is that you find the midpoint of AB. Of A and B. Then comes the step, uh, the fourth and the final step, which is that you form an equation using y minus y1 equal to m x minus x1. Okay, now we will do an example, but for the example, we will do it straight from past paper questions. Okay. Yes, uh, reciprocal can be used for any 90 degree line, okay, for any perpendicular line, okay, not necessarily bisector. Let's do, yeah, yeah, we will do that. In fact, I have shared a PDF, so you guys can download the past paper questions, which I will be solving in this stream, okay. Now, as far as concepts are concerned, this is not it, okay? There are more concepts, but these are the most frequently tested concepts. Now, you do have area of any polygon on an XY plane. This will cover through a past paper question and also some important polygons and their properties. This also we will cover through a past paper question. And I'll, I'll just uh, write down the properties, which sadly you will have to memorize, okay? Now, <clears throat> Le like I said, let's do some past paper questions. So we'll start with perpendicular bisector. Here's a question. And by the way, I have uh, categorized the questions. The ones that you see highlighted as green are pretty easy questions. The ones that you see highlighted as yellow are medium, orange is hard, and red are some insanely difficult questions, okay? So we'll try and do all four of them, all four categories, okay? Now, just because I find a question insanely difficult, doesn't mean that you also have to find it insanely difficult. Maybe that's not as difficult for you guys. Maybe it's relatively easier. So yeah, okay. So here's a question which says, the coordinates of two points A and B are so and so. Show that the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB is three X plus two Y equals two eleven. So show questions are very nice and also unforgiving at the same time because you have the right answer right in front of you. So if you get it, that's great. You know for sure it's correct. But if you don't, then you also know for sure that it's wrong. So first step, first step is that we find out the gradient using the points AB. So what do we do? We do 11 minus three over five minus minus seven. So what's 11 minus three? That is eight, five minus minus seven is 12. So if you simplify it using the table of four, that's equal to two upon three, okay? Now, what will be the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to it or the gradient of the perpendicular bisector? that will be minus three upon two. So you can think of it this way, that there are two boxes to check. One is the gradient box, if you're finding the equation of a straight line. The other is the point box. 
So we can check the gradient box, but we still have the point box to check, okay? Now, how will I find the point through which the line is passing? We know that the perpendicular bisector always passes through the midpoint. So that means what is the next objective? The next objective is to find out the midpoint of A and B, okay? So let's do that. Minus seven plus five upon two, comma three plus 11 upon two. So minus seven plus five is minus two. Minus two upon two is what? Minus one. Yeah. Three plus 11 is 14. 14 upon two is seven. Okay. Now let's put this all together and form an equation. So y minus seven is equals to minus three upon two into x minus minus one, which will eventually become plus one. So let's turn it into plus one. So we have two y minus 14 is equals to minus 3x minus 3. Okay, so let's write this nicely. 2y plus 3x, the way the question wants us to, 2y plus 3x is equals to minus 3 plus 14, which is 11. And let's rearrange it. So 3x plus 2y equals to 11. And there you go. So the main concept that was tested over here was perpendicular bisector. Okay. So that's it, fellas, that's your answer, okay? Now, this was a fairly easy question, like I said. Now, let's do a slightly more difficult question, okay? So let's do a medium level question. Let's do this one here, okay? So it says here, the line M is the midpoint of the line joining so-and-so. Find the equation of the line through M, which is parallel to the line so-and-so. Now, if I ask you guys to underline the one key word in this question, and by the way, when we write down the equation of a straight line in the form y equals to mx plus c, what is m? m is the gradient. Okay, and what is c? c is the point intercept. Yeah, so what is the one keyword in this question? Parallel, that is correct. So the one key word in this question is the word parallel, okay? Now, what does that tell us? That tells us that it will have the same gradient, okay? So always try and look for keywords in the question before you start solving it, okay? Now, so because the two lines are parallel, that means they will have the same gradient. That means the next thing we have to do is we have to find that gradient, okay? So we still need to find out what the gradient is. And how can I find out the gradient? For that, we need to step by step make y the subject, okay? So you can start by this, y upon two is equals to minus x upon three plus one, and then you can cross multiply. So you will have y is equals to minus two upon three x plus two, okay? And now you can see that the gradient of the line which you wish to form the equation of is basically parallel to this line, which means that the gradient is going to be what? Which means the gradient is going to be minus two upon three, okay? So we have the gradient and what? where is the line passing through? Actually, there was another keyword in this question and that was midpoint. So that means we can check that gradient box, okay? But we still need to find out the point through which the line is going to pass, okay? For which we need to find the midpoint. So three plus minus one upon two and seven plus one upon two. So three plus minus is two, two upon two is one, seven plus one is eight, eight upon two is four, okay? Now you can put this all together and form an equation. So y minus four is equals to minus two upon three into x minus one. So let's see what do we get? Y minus, wait a minute, two y minus eight is equal to, no wait, 2y, 3y, sorry, just a minute. So 3y minus 12 is equals to minus 2x plus 2. And let's write this nicely. 
3y plus 2x equals to 2 plus 12, which means is equals to 14. 3y plus 2x is equals to 14. And there you go, fellas. That is your answer. Okay, so like I said, this was not a very difficult question. This was fairly um, on a medium level. Okay. Sir, can you stream exponential and log? Okay, I will try and do that. I will try and do that. I'm not gonna promise it, but I think I have already done a stream on it, Cheyenne. I think I already have done a stream on it. So have you looked for it? Do search for it. You might find something similar to it. Sir, in this question, they didn't ask us to find perpendicular equation. So why did we solve it that way? Uh, yeah, you're right. They didn't ask us to find the perpendicular. They asked us to find out the equation of the line that's parallel to it. Okay. So that is why we took the same gradient. We still had to find the equation, right? Poisson distribution in simple words. Hmm. Uh, I don't think I can put it in simple words. Yeah. I don't think I can. There's a detailed explanation behind what Poisson distribution is. Okay, now let's do a slightly more difficult questions. Now, the questions that I really wanna solve with you guys are these questions, the one where you have shapes, okay? Seven years past papers. Uh, if you've been getting a good score and you've been getting that good score consistently, then yes, that's fine. Okay, so this is a question from May, June 2019, paper one, variant one. Okay, let's see what it says. It says the diagram shows a trapezium A, B, C, D, which in which the coordinates of A, B, C are four comma zero, zero comma two, and H comma three H respectively. The lines B, C, and A, D are parallel, and angle A, B, C is equal to 90 degrees. Now, if angle A, B, C is 90 degrees, then the lines are parallel. That means this angle will also be 90 degrees, okay? Not an assumption, we can say that for sure. All right, now, next it says, find by calculation the value of H. Now, by calculation basically means that you can't measure or you can't count, you can't use any vector method over here, okay? So that is what by calculation basically means. So that means it has to be through gradient equation, whatever, stuff like that, okay? Now, how will I find out the value of H? Let's see, let's put some thought into it and then we can see what to do. So because the line BAB and BC are perpendicular, that means if I can find out the gradient of one line, I can find out the gradient of the other as well. So let's find out the gradient of line AB, okay? So zero minus two over four minus zero, which means minus one upon two. So the gradient of line AB is equal to minus one upon two. And because the line BC is perpendicular to line AB, that means the gradient of line BC is going to be equal to what? Is going to be equal to two. Now, if I find out the gradient of line BC, I'll do three H minus two over H minus zero and equate it to the gradient, which is equal to two. Then if you cross multiply, so you have three H minus two, which is equal to two H and get all the h's on one side, so 3h minus 2h is equals to 2, which leads to the conclusion that h is equals to 2. And that's it, three easy marks in the back. Okay, next is part two, which is hence find the coordinates of d. Okay, now if cd is a horizontal line, what can you tell me about this line? This line is a blank line. If it's a line that's parallel to the x-axis, I think I already answered the que uh, my own question, but if CD is a line that is parallel to the x-axis, then what can you tell me about it? C 
answer are you and Zen? No. I mean, yes, you can say that. We haven't met because he's from a different city. I'm from a different city. But yes, we've spoken a few times. He's doing some great work, mashallah. Gradient zero. Okay, what else? D y coordinate will be six. Okay, that is correct. Now, since we know what the value of h is, we know that h is equal to root. That means we can actually find out the coordinates of c. They will be two comma six. Okay, why? Because h is equal to two. What that means is that the x coordinate of c is two, and because the y coordinate of c is six, and because c d is a line that's parallel to the x axis, that means it is a horizontal line. Now, because it's a horizontal line, we can't say what the x coordinate of d is going to be. But what we can say is that the y coordinate of d will be equal to six. OK, so y, So y equals to six because now I'm writing this down for you because line c d is horizontal. OK, now. If I can somehow, I don't know how, but if I can somehow find an equation containing x and y, maybe the equation of AD, and in the equation of AD, if I can somehow plug in the y coordinate as six, I will be able to find out the x coordinate, okay? So that's what we are going to do. Our new objective is to find out the equation of AD. And that's how you should always plan your answer. You should see that what is it, what is the one thing that will solve your problem? In this case, what is the one thing that will help us find out the coordinates of D? And that is the equation of line 80, so that you instantly know what you have to do or where you should be focusing on. So we already know what the gradient of line BC is. It's equal to 2, OK? And that will also be equal to the gradient of line AD. OK, that will also be equal to the gradient of line AD. Now, why is that? That is because they're both parallel, okay? So here's what we are going to do. The gradient of line BC is going to be equal to two, which is going to be equal to the gradient of line AD. So, and do we have a point through which the line is passing? Yes, we do, four comma zero, okay? So Y minus zero is equals to two into X minus four, form an equation. Let's see, what do we get? We get Y is equals to two X minus eight. And now we have a point of which we know what the y coordinate is, but we don't know what the x coordinate is, so let's find that. So we plug in six in place of y. We let x be as it is. So two x is equals to six plus eight, which is 14. That means x is equals to seven. So what are the coordinates? Seven comma six. And there you go. That's the answer. Let's see if there's another part to it. No, there isn't. Okay, now. Let's do an insanely difficult question. This was a hard question. Sir, we can also equate gradient of BC to gradient of AD. Yeah, you could have done that as well. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. You could have done that. OK, just give me a minute. We'll resume. Okay, sorry about that. Now, as I was saying, let's do perhaps an insanely difficult question. 
Okay, so this is one. This is from May June 2018. Paper one, variant two. Okay, let's see what it says. Sir, what is the dark side of A-level? What do you mean the dark side? Spending a lot of money? That could be a dark side. And then, God forbid, not getting a good result. And then giving retakes. Yeah, that could be a dark side. Other than that, I don't know. OK, so you guys want to have a go at this question? Or you guys want to tell me how we're going to solve this? In terms of academics, I don't know. Yeah, you could say that uh, th this is a difficult question. I mean, but put some thought into it. A good idea is always to visualize, OK? Now, here are the coordinates of P. Of it is solving, OK? 60% uh, of it is solved. Trying to make a sketch of whatever it is that you're given in the text. So 2y is equals to minus 3x plus k. y is actually equal to what? The Is it fine now? Okay, this is weird. 